Hey everybody, welcome back to Starfire Gaming. I am Sir Joseph and this is Baldur's Gate 3. We are exploring the city right now. So we've still got like up here to explore, over here to explore, all of this to explore, down here. And we have to get to the Steel Watch Foundry and figure out what's going on there to shut down the Steel Watch. So we are going to head down this path. How much farther can I go? He the watch or leave. the goon. Today, this man will pay. It's not a lie. If you would just listen. It's follow. I can explain. You have done quite enough explaining, Volothamp Gadam. You have poisoned the very hearts and minds of these good kind, gentle citizens with your lies, your delusions, your conspiracies. Though you hide behind a mask of stories, we have seen beyond the veil. We see what you really are, fear monger. Hear, hear! Attention seeker. Hear, hear! Agent of chaos. Your parasite stirs in recognition. This man is infected. Wreck the hells follow! Today, citizens, we rid ourselves of this cankerous sore. Today, we burn away all falsehoods. Today, we will be divided no longer, for today, we rise in truth! Psst. Don't just stand there! Help me, goddammit! Help me! I suppose we should aid him, though I'd hate to miss the show. crime is this man guilty of? If he is guilty, where is the evidence? Where is the trial? This is injustice. This is mob madness. The newcomer speaks and speaks of evidence and trials and justice. And in so doing, they delay their very own salvation. Dear citizen, Dear friend, rest assured you will have your justice. But I'm afraid the time for trials has passed. Now is the time for judgment! No! Oh, please! No! Well, that was with finesse. Quick. All right, we got to get to Volo, try to get him out of there. We have any water? <sighs> Ice arrow.
fountain back here, but I don't think that's going to do us any good. See, we can sprint. I think that's what we're just going to have to do. We're going to take the hits while we try to go freeze bowl, though. No time to waste. All right, Polo, it's up to you to get out of there now. Massive deflecting of missiles.
I didn't do the cure I wanted. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and throw out Spirit Guardian instead. When I go. Why is she not hit by the Spear Guardians? There you go, Volo. Misty step. <laughs> you picked the wrong fight, friend. <laughs> Those steel watch aren't gonna trigger, that's good. Finding my way. don't necessarily want to knock these people out of this area because I'm fear if I knock them into like this part we will spawn those uh I just shot the spiritual weapon. That was not the plan. Fall by my hand. Talk to Volo. Sold everything. Slipping through the absolute There's Volo. Need to find a way forward. Let's go loot first. Then we'll talk to Volo. The secrets I would have taken to my grave if you hadn't intervened. Come here, Volo. You. I 
taken to my grave if you hadn't intervened. Come here a moment, will you? Slipping through the absolute blockade. Gods! I really thought I was done for. I suppose thanks are in order. Again? What's an heroic story without a little risking of one's neck, eh? And you know what they say, the bigger the story, the more people want to kill you for it. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. But not here. Too many eyes, ears, and weapons about. Meet me at your camp. All right, let's chat with these guys, and then we're going to go to the camp. I ain't sending Lee Puck and the girls off without me. But if that smuggler can get them to water deep and away from the absolute. You want four birds on the sloop? You pay for all four birds. We only have enough for three. Many we sold everything. This is life and death for me, too, mate. You only get as many birds on my sloop as you can pay for. If I allow any freeloaders, my own crew will scrag me. Captain Sleem, is it? It would be a shame to split up the family, don't you think? Let the father go with them. I can find some way to make it good with the crew. Alright, let's go to camp. You're low on spell slots. And I have a feeling there's going to be some big fights in the, uh, there's blood everywhere in the good old, uh, well, not good old, but the old uh, steel foundry. It is splendid to see you again, my friend. If you hadn't saved me from that mob, I'd be penning a guide to the afterlife based on first-hand experience. Perhaps you would hazard a guess as to why the mob turned on me? <laughs> Did you speak out against the cult of the absolute? They have eyes everywhere. It is not the eyes that I fear. It is the intelligence behind them. The absolute is merely the outward form of something far more insidious. The Lord of Murder has returned. As he did a hundred years ago, Baal has set his accursed sights on Baldur's Gate. And his temple runs red with the blood of the innocent. Oren is his chosen. And like Saravok before her, she is able to take on the savage form of the Slayer. If the Slayer is not stopped, it will slaughter every living thing in this city. As one of those things, I'm particularly eager to stop it. And there is a way. I have a study of the beast penned by the wizard Irenicus himself. It contains all the knowledge needed to slay the Slayer. Now I just need a brave adventurer, willing to face Baal's Chosen, and to put the knowledge into practice. I'll do it. Wonderful! I can scarcely think of anyone more suitable. It will serve you well. A study of the Slayer penned by John Irenicus. It's one of a kind, so do try to keep it away from the inevitable bloodbath, hmm? What is the Slayer? The Dream Eater. 
It is said the children of Baal are claimed throughout their sleep, ever disturbed by visions of a life of bloodshed and terror. Once they have seen too much, once these dreams drive their minds to break, they are beset by the Slayer. It is a beast of unspeakable violence that consumes all in its path, including the soul of the one who is host to it. Tell me about Rinicus. A genius. Exiled from his home in the elven paradise of Soldanesala, when he attempted to seize the power of life itself, he instead turned his magnificent mind to murder on a grand scale. That is how he came to crave the power of the Baal spawn. He saw them not as living things, but as tools for his own machinations. In the end, though Irenicus took the form of the Slayer for himself, it was a Baal spawn who thwarted him, the same that saved Baldur's Gate. Already slain miracles, Chosen. I can handle this. I am a living witness to Baal's defeat those hundred years ago. So I know your battle against him is not futile. He can be stopped, but not all of those who stood against him survived. And those who did were never the same again. I wish you luck, my friend. And I hope that when I see you again, you'll be in one piece. Two or three at most. <laughs> scratch, hmm. pet scratch. Scratch's tail wags enthusiastically. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. All right, let's check out this book. All right. Even though this child of Baal has thus far been squandering the gift of their unholy blood, it seems that Baal's lash is inescapable. The graven god now has besieged them with the slayer, the beast and prophet. And when they turn, their mind is broken, more broken than all my torments could ever rend it to. I spent all this while testing the captive spawn with my experiments, trying to extract more of Baal's gift from them. But they have sought the slayer upon themselves, brought the slayer upon themselves. It seems that it manifests in moments of pure hatred, a divine hatred who, bleh, a divine hatred those of mortal blood cannot fathom. When a child of Baal hates in a way that pleases their lord, Baal himself descends upon them as his own avatar. Despite all the ball spawn of Candle Keep has done to provoke Saravok's uprising, it seems Father must love them dearly indeed to intervene personally on their behalf. Perhaps if I continue my routine of absorbing all of the divine essence I extracted while the spawn was my captive, I can force Ball's magics to quicken in my blood trick the fool god into thinking I am one of his own children. Thus may I tame the beast for myself. The book continues with detailed records of Icarus's or er, Iranicus's experimental attempts to transform into the Slayer. We gotta pet the owlbear.
All right, nobody wants to chat. Let's go ahead and end the day so we can nap. Camp. Chat, so let's go ahead and go to bed. Here goes nothing. Ooh, 40 again. That's twice in a row we've hit it. Maybe there was an update. On oh, one of the updates, they fixed that to where it wouldn't put you at like 56 or 58. Looks like we got something happening here. Or not. Zora wants to talk. Come for a chat. All right. I guess just we can tell her to leave. Don't want to piss her off just yet. All right, let's chat with these guys. Hells, it's everywhere still. I don't suppose you've got any experience getting oil out of sealed wood. Where did this stuff come from anyway? Me and Fleer here were out on the water casting our nets, expecting to find the usual crop of halibut. Then, all of a sudden, my net starts dragging, and there's a bloody wave serving all twisted up in it. We took her back to the docks to try and help her, but she was already dead. Why are there so many dead fish floating in the harbor? Bugger if I know. Might be something to do with all that oil in the water. It's too bad we can't sell them. Bloody waste, if you ask me. What happened to her body? The other wave servants came to get it. Uh, her. Sorry. <laughs> they took her back to the temple. You can hear the bloody caterwauling from here. Did you see anything unusual? We both saw some sort of wake moving towards the docks when we picked her up. But there weren't any other boats around. Maybe it was something big moving underwater. I don't know. It was weird, whatever it was. Kind of looked like it might have been heading towards that building across the channel. Actually. Is your boat all right? The boat's fine, but the nets are in tatters. Need to deal with all this oil before we can fix them, though. Okay. Building across the channel. Is spoiled. You'll have to wait for the next boat. How do fish even get dirty? They live in water. My father always told me, Kate, commerce is like warfare. Fight for it like your life's at stake. I was this close to landing that deal. Next time, for sure. War is good for some businesses. What can I say? I got mouths to feed, too. What? Oh, Brando Bearish cursed me. I should have taken that deal the first time it was offered and half today's price. Oh, I'm a tap. What? How much for the salt pizza? Humbly. A brutal goddess from what I understand. Without even the slightest touch of subtlety to her. 
Subtlety isn't exactly your forte. Quite the, about wearing a circuit in quite the statue there. We both know you sell it for twice that to the You'd be surprised how people can miss what's in plain sight. I miss the fact that Shah was deceiving me. Besides, I have a new look now. Suits me, I think. On that matter, you'll hear no argument from me. Oh, Wave Mother, Queen of the Depths. Hear me. Please carry Holly to her final rest in the deep wilds. Please. Sorry. Are you here for Wave Servant Holly's funeral? Oh, it's already started out the just inside. I like the outfit. I think that looks pretty cool with the scales. Is that what that singing is for? Yes. Oh, please, you're most welcome. We have much to be thankful for. May the Wave Mother smile on you as she did Holly. Of course you're right. It is easy. Remedy. You just need to honor the bitch queen. I thought it wise to make an offering to the Sea Queen before sailing out tomorrow. Wasn't expecting to find the servants so preoccupied. It's valuable. Here to make an offering to Umberly as well, eh? They say it's good luck to placate the bitch queen after a drowning. Do all these offerings even do anything? When you sail as much as I have, you'll know damn well they do plenty. Got a few spare coins to chuck in the fountain? Certainly wouldn't do you any harm. I mean, thank you. I was just about two fans. Sorry, mate. No time to chat. Just here to make an offering, then leave. In and out, yeah? Queen Umberly, the sea herself, I dash myself upon the rocks of your favor. Let me drink the brine of your glory deep into my lungs. Turn my skull to shell, my ribs to reef, and earn your blessing, and to spare me the wrath of your Sahaugen. She's gonna send me to the bottom of the sea, isn't she? What if she knows you've given her The celebration is in the main chamber. Praise Umberly! Second tide is the umbilant holy day when the timber harvest for shipbuilding is blessed by the sacrifice of a juvenile kraken. The Wave Mother sees all, even you. Okay. First tide is the umbilant holy day when the harbors first opened to spring sea trade, celebrated by sacrificing a great turtle. It is easy, Did you hear the wave servants talking about a beast in Grey Harbor? If that's true, prayers are the least we can do. Chat. These offerings need to be stored before the next tide, or there'll be a Landra to pay. As the Wave Mother welcomes another daughter to the deep wilds, know that we too shall gladly follow when our time has come. So 
subsume us utterly. Talk to the chef, the cooks, the kitchen staff. Fish is piss. I loved Holly as much as anyone, but they've been wailing and praying for hours. My best pot for a bit of quiet. This most holy death. Hands off the drinks. We have enough to fill Grey Harbor. It's all for the funeral. Glorious wave, Mother. Pour fury upon the beast responsible for this injustice. Leave its master a bloated carcass in the spume. Rejoice, sisters. For Umberly has blessed her humble daughter with a pure death. Her lips blue with her kiss, her lungs full of her quenching word. Umberly's mercy saved her from a slow, sinking death in the beast's shadow. How dare this beast sully the safety of Grey Harbor? We will find its master and send him struggling into the bitch queen's embrace. Not a sweet sleep like Holly's but a suffocating flood of fruitless guards and bursting flesh. You, supplicant, what tribute do you bring to honor the Wave Mother's fallen daughter? I wish your soul the stillness of a calmed ocean. As still as the water in her halted lungs, a most fitting tribute, received with gratitude. Who is the deceased? Holly, one of Umberly's beloved wave servants. Blessed Umberly saw fit to spare her an ignoble death, but her passing was not as the wave mother intended. It was a beast who took her life. An unnatural one whose very existence is an affront to Umberly. A wretched metal monstrosity hewn by hubris. A rusting pollutant that bleeds black blood into Umberly's pristine waters. good at slaying beasts. Maybe I can help you. The Queen of the Depths is generous to those who serve her, and her favor is far less deadly than her wrath. Find the master of this poisonous beast and slay him. Then one of her most precious gifts shall be yours. You're reminded of the man you met beneath the Grey Harbor and the submersible he commanded. I think I know the master of this poisonous beast. Let's see what I can do. Salt kiss your brow. We await your return and the beast master's demise. Rejoice as the wave mother welcomes another daughter to the deep wilds. Know that we All too right. shall gladly follow when our time has come. All right, so we're going to call it here. A little bit short today. Um, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. As always, like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate that as well. I have been Sir Joseph. You guys are amazing. Until next time, stay safe out there. And I'll talk to you later.